In the headlines, President Buhari Nefewa broadcast apologizes to Nigerians for painful Nairobi redesign policy. Explosion kills two in Kefi Nasara State. Zamfara State's Governor Matoali absent as deputy hands over to Governor-elect Lawal Dari. And on the foreign scene, polls close in Turkey's historic presidential runoff. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. Now the news in detail. The outgoing president, Muhammad Buhari, has apologized to Nigerians for pain and suffering associated with the implementation of currency swap or cashless policy. The president in his farewell broadcast as president, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, said it was meant to revamp the economy. The president called on all Nigerians to be more vigilant and support the security agencies by ensuring that values defined by being brothers keepers govern the people. Actions. My fellow Nigerian brothers, sisters, and friends of Nigeria, I address you today in my last assignment as a democratically elected president of our great and well endowed nation with a deep sense of gratitude to God, a great deal of appreciation to the Nigerian people and a modest sense of fulfillment. Today, we mark and celebrate another peaceful transition of power from one elected government to another in our steady march to improve and sustain Nigeria's democracy. This year, we witnessed the most clearly contested presidential elections since the First Republic, and this demonstrates that our democracy is getting better and more entrenched with each election. We must, as a nation, improve and sustain gains we made in the electoral process on an incremental basis for Nigeria to take its rightful place among nations. Our democracy provides for, allows and encourages seeking redress for perceived injustices, enabling some candidates and political parties that do not agree with the results to go to court. Irrespective of the outcome of the various cases, I urge all parties involved to accept the decision of our courts and join hands to build a better Nigeria. I salute the doggedness and resilience of all the presidential candidates and their political parties for believing in our judicial system by taking their grievances with the election results to court. In the course of the campaigns, we had argued and disagreed on how to make Nigeria better, but we never disagreed or had any doubts that Nigeria has to be better. As you are president, I call on all of us to bring to bear the strength of our individualism, the power of our unity, the convictions of our beliefs, to make Nigeria work better and together with one spirit and one purpose. Now to Nasara State, where an explosion suspected to be a bomb explosion uh, killed six persons in the state and the incident occurred in the early hours of Sunday morning uh, opposite a general hospital in cafe along the Nassau metropolis and two female occupants of the rented apartments in the area are identified as victims some residents of the area said the victims and and knew and that they arrived cafe on Saturday afternoon but other accounts indicate that they were hiding from raid by operatives, departments, 
of the state security before the explosion. An eyewitness told our reporters that the victims have noticed that the presence of DSS and realized that they had no option than to blow off themselves with an explosive or grenade. When contacted and phoned for comment, the public relations officer of the police, uh, DSP Rahman Nanza, said he will get back to our reporter. <laughs> The Kaduna State Governor Nasri Arafai said the incoming administration and the state is lucky to have working document to work with on the first day in office. The governor stated this during a brief remark before handing over a copy of the report of the transition committee to the governor-elect Obasani at council chambers of Sa Hashim Ibrahim House in Kaduna. The report. Ahead of the May 29 inauguration, Governor Nasrul Arifai said the governor elect Obasani can hit the ground running from day one. The governor said he was not fortunate to have such document when he assumed office in 2015. First is to thank the transition committee for the hard work and dedication that enabled them to produce this report before the date of handover to the next administration. We were not so fortunate when we came in 2015 because briefings only started after we took office on the 29th of May 2015. Then our transition committee had all the materials and the documents to prepare a report. The governor elect Obasani commended members of the transition committee and promised to deliver on all his campaign promises. I have no doubt in my mind they have done a very good job. I will try to study their recommendation and by the grace of God we will try as much as possible to implement most of their recommendations. I'm, I can say here that I'm a very lucky person because uh, I'm being given all the support by my boss who have to make sure that uh, the people we put together are people that can really help my own administration. The chairman of the transition committee, Balara Balawa, said members of the committee exhibited transparency in their assignment and engaged extensively in the area of agriculture, environment, natural resources, human capital, institutional development, and security. Bella Musa. Cross TV News Kaduna. The outgoing Zamfara State's Governor Bello Matawali has handed over the Transition Committee reports to Governor elect Dauda Lowell. Speaking during the handing over of the documents at Government House, Gosau Matawali, who was represented by his Deputy Senator Hassan Nasiha, said that the documents were compiled by the Transition Committee set up to ensure smooth handing and taking over of government and the state. The report. Governor Bello Matawali, represented by his deputy, while handing over the Transition Committee report to the Governor-elect, said the documents contained activities of the administration from year 2019 to year 2023, which will serve as guard to the incoming administration in the state. Governor Matawali also seized the opportunity and called on the Governor-elect to caution his supporters to be law-abiding and ensure peace during and after the inauguration ceremony on the 29th of May. He stressed the need for people to know that Zamfara State belongs to all, hoping that what happened during the governorship election results declaration will not repeat itself after the handover of government to the incoming administration. This, um, this state is our state. Zamfara State is our state. We can never run away from it. Yeah. Last time, a lot has happened by the time when it was announced that you are the one that you won the race. A lot of destructions has been made throughout the state, especially people are better. People that are not in other part. Please, I would like to use this opportunity to please kindly plead to you and to other members of the other party to let them take this state as 
a brotherhood state. We are one, and we don't have any place to go and to stay in Zambia state. Responding, the governor-elect Delta Lowell described the handing over as historic that remain indelible on his mind. The current governor of Zambia state is handing over the transition committee report to the incoming administration, alhamdulillah. I've heard clearly uh, from the deputy governor about some of the few remarks he made, one in terms of power being transcend. Alhamdulillah, he is a very good reminder for all of us. And uh, I can assure you, I'm fully aware and uh, I'll do whatever it takes, inshallah, to keep reminding myself about this. The Zamfara State Governor-elect Lowell also said his administration will study transition document and if there are concerns on issues, he will approach the outgoing administration for explanations. Wamba State Governor Inoue Yahya and Chairman Northern Governors Forum has dissolved its cabinet ahead of his swearing-in for second term. Governor Yahya announced the dissolution of the state's executive council at the valedictory session of the state council meeting. Ibrahim Ismail has more. His Excellency the Chairman of the Council. This is the valedictory session of the Gombe State Executive Council, signaling the end of the first tenure of the Inwaya Hia APC led administration that began from 29 May 2019. Governor Yahya, who announced the dissolution of the cabinet, thanked the commissioners for their contributions in the last four years. Is what we did. Ayaba announced that this cabinet dissolves as from today. This is the last watching day. But as Mr. President said, we are still in government. You manage until we transit finally on the 29th. So don't be surprised. I walk here Saturdays and Sundays. If I send for you, please. Hurry up, <laughs> hurry up and come. There could be one or two things for you to explain or answer or, or advise on what we do. The Attorney General of the State and Commissioner for Justice pointed that the APC led government had inherited multiple problems when it came to power in 2019, but ensured it worked hard to surmount them. You have faced this daunting challenges squarely and they have been addressed successfully. And for that, the people of Gombe are left. And for those of us who are in the train that has moved this Gombe forward, we thank you for recording, giving us the opportunity to put our footprints in the history of Gombe. Your work that you have done, outlive those who have done for 16 years, and you will continue to be remembered for that. I don't need to mention that. But particularly, I cannot fail to mention the Muhammad Buhari Industrial Park. The cumulative effect of that will be seen in the future. And whether you are alive or not, people will continue to say it was His Excellency Muhammad Inwa Yahaya that constructed this. Thank you for that. The governor has inaugurated a transition committee in preparation for his swearing in for the second term come 29 May 2023. Ibrahim Ismail. Trust TV News, Gwende. Still on handing over matters, the outgoing governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, is set to perform the official handing over of the state affairs to Governor-elect Abba Kabir Yusuf on Sunday, May 28. The ceremony will take place at 9 p.m. at the government house in Kano. This was announced in a statement by the Commissioner for Information and Internal Affairs, Maila Mohammed Garba. According to the statement, the Kanu State Government Transition Committee has already communicated the event to the Transition Committee of the Governor-elect. The two committees have met during the week to work out a harmonized agenda for the handing over ceremony, including the presentation of handing over document to the Governor-elect's committee. Following the handover, Governor Ganjaje will depart for Abuja as the head of the Kano delegation attending the inauguration of President-elect Bola Ahmed Tenubu on Monday, May 29. The urgency of the departure is to meet the deadline for the closure of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja, which will be closed 
for the inauguration ceremony. Mylankar urged the people of Kanu to continue praying for peace and development in the state and official handing over ceremony and the Governor Gandujay's subsequent departure for the President-elect's inauguration signify a significant moment in Kanu state's political landscape. It symbolizes a peaceful transfer of power and highlights the importance of unity and development for the state's future. The federal government at the weekend released a foreign large crude carrier VLCC, empty heroic Edo, arrested by the Nigerian Navy for violating the Nigerian maritime law. And the vessel was arrested by the man of the Nigerian Navy in August 2022 for grave infractions of the maritime laws and subsequently prosecuted by the federal government at the Federal High Court in Portacket in January this year. Speaking to journalists shortly after releasing the vessel, Navy Captain Mohammed Adamu, the commanding officer, Navy Operating Base, Boni River State, said having fulfilled all the conditions of the plea began to the satisfaction of the Federal High Court, the large crude carrier has been released to its owners, Idu Maritime, with the cons consent of the court and approval of the federal government of Nigeria. Navy Captain Mohamed Adamu noted that the general public and the maritime world were notified of the grave infractions of motor tanker heroic Idu and her prosecution by the federal government of Nigeria, the federal high court Patakat on the 10th of Jan January, 2023. Navy Captain Mohamed stated that it was equally disclosed that the very large crude carrier VLCC Heroic Ido and her 26 foreign crew pleaded guilty and elected voluntarily to enter into a plea bargain. Agreement with the Federal Republic of Nigeria as well as make restitution to the federal government. You're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up shortly. We'll take a look at the effect on physical libraries of the modern era. Details of the story and more after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. This is the news update on Trust TV, a recap of our top stories. We told you earlier that President Mohamed Bahari in a farewell broadcast apologizes to Nigerians for painful Naira redesign policy. And explosion kills two in Kefi Nasser estate. And moving on, the House of Representatives has amended the Central Bank of Nigeria Act to raise the lending limit of the APS Bank to the federal government from 5 to 15 percent. The amendment was done at an emergency session held by the lawmakers on Sunday. It comes amid concerns from the public regarding why the National Assembly would approve the ways and means advances request of President Mahmoud Buhari considering that the 23.1 trillion naira request was many times over the 5% lending limit of the CBN. The passage of the bill by the House comes 24 hours after the Senate passed the same bill in a similar emergency session. Just like the Senate did, the House also amended the 2023 supplementary budget to allow for its implementation till 31st December 2023. 
Now, most traditional libraries have received little or no attention in recent times as majority of students and researchers now rely on internet for books and other forms of information. But despite the rise in internet-based sources, physical libraries still remain relevant as some of the information on the internet might not be absolutely accurate, correct or reliable, while others are completely unavailable. Hamid Oyegbadi reports that this is why students are calling for an overhaul of physical libraries. The report. Until recently, students and researchers dedicated substantial part of their time to visit libraries to consult, read, and even borrow books. But with the advent of technology, most people now depend on the internet to get the needed information in their fields of study. This has caused public libraries to suffer neglect and many of them near moribund, especially owing to paucity of funds. Most of the libraries that I've gone to, they don't usually have books that are up to par or up to date. Most of the time, their latest editions are usually 2009, 2010. The technological had come with innovations such as online resources, online libraries, that is practically taking over the traditional uh, world of library because students basically they use the internet more often so if the materials that are needed that are in the traditional library are also provided to the internet library then it can be more easier for students and every researcher to make their research online with the internet rather than going to the traditional Library. Notwithstanding the online books, the traditional libraries are still very relevant as some of the information on the internet might not be absolutely accurate, correct, and reliable. In most cases, you know, there are some uh, materials in library that, are, that are, are of essential use. So this link between traditional library and uh, electronic library is still very dear because uh, there is still a, a message or a sort of an interrelationship. For example, there is a case, we have a, something like a interlibrary loan. Then we have a case of a selective uh, dissemination of information. Yes, information could be sourced online and uh, the, it is the, the librarians in the physical library who will work on that uh, information query without the traditional library, even the online, the electronic library will not be a reality. The students charge government to totally overhaul public libraries to meet the modern day demands of library users. Amit Ojebade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. The Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria said it has developed a strategy to produce 30,000 nurses by the end of this year. The Registrar of the Council, Farouk Omar Abubakar, made this known in Abuja during the official commissioning of the new permanent headquarters office complex of the Council. He said it will help close the shortage gap from the brain drain and ensure quality service delivery. He said the Council also targets producing 50,000 nurses and midwives by the end of 2025. The Registrar said that the new office complex will show up accommodation and the work of the council, adding that it has 47 office spaces, a three suspended floor office building with a basement floor that has offices, two storage rooms, one archive and offices, among others. Commissioning the edifice, Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Hanire, commended the registrar and governing council for the judicious utilization of the public funds, noting that the council had recorded on parallel milestones in all aspects of the mandate including developing a new strategic plan from 2023 to 2027 20, and um, the setting of full computer-based professional examination is one of the things he applauded the national president of the national association of nigerian nurses and midwives comrade michael ekumanachi called for an enhanced salary structure specific to nurses in the country 
And now on the international scene, voting closed in Turkey's presidential runoff with President Recep Tayyip Erdogan fighting for a historic third term. Erdogan is going head to head with opposition leader Kemal Khalid Doglu, a 74 year old bureaucrat and leader of the left learning chip. In the first round of the voting on May 14, Doan secured a nearly five point lead over his opponent but fell short of the 50% threshold needed to win. The president parliamentary bloc won a majority of seats in the parliamentary race on the same day. Doan cast his vote at a voting tender in Istanbul on Sunday and Kalidoko cast his vote in Ankara. Electoral authorities said voting was passing without any issues and that result should come sooner than in the first round. Last week, a third place candidate Sinan Agan, who won 5% of the first round vote, publicly endorsed Erdogan for the boosting the strongman's leader's chances of winning Sunday's second and final presidential round. And in sport, a Paris Saint-Germain goalkeeper Sergio Rico is in a serious condition in intensive care after a horse riding accident. Rico, who's 29 years old, was riding in El Rigio region of Huelva in Spain when he was in a collision with a runway horse and fell. The Spaniard was flown by helicopter to a hospital in Seville. Rico was on the bench as PSG won a record 11th league title with a 1-1 draw at Strasbourg on Saturday. He had returned to his native Spain after the squad were given the off following the win. The former Sevilla keeper joined the French champions in 2020 and spent the 2018-2019 season on loan at Premier League side Fulham. He has made 29 appearances for PSG since moving from Sevilla in September 2019. And that brings us to the end of the news update at this hour. For more, follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.